Some years there are updates that completely suspend an entire category. Others you get something like the 399 US dollar plus Apple Watch Series 9 and 799 US dollar after two steady improvements that technically add up to the best Apple Watches we have ever seen. Just not by a whole lot and not if you have already got a recent Apple Watch model. It makes sense that 2023's updates are quite compared to last year when Apple effectively kicked down the door with not one, not two, but three new smartwatches. This year, the Series 9 and Ultra 2 are nearly identical in design to their predecessors, save new colors, strap options, and carbon neutral packaging. Instead, the big updates this year are the S9 SIP the addition of a second generation ultra wideband chip and watch os 10. the former promises a 30 percent faster gpu and a four core neural engine with twice the performance of the series 8 that in turn enables onboard c processing greater power efficiency and the handy double tap gesture the upgraded uwb chip enables precision finding much like air tags Meanwhile, watchOS 10 reintroduces widgets to Apple's smartwatch landscape. I never like it when gadget companies say a new processor makes things a lot better, unless you have a very laggy device. Minute improvements in performance are hard for the average person to see. Granted, processor specs matter more with Android smartwatches because they have historically been plugged by laggy screens and performance issues. But with the Apple Watch, this has been less of a problem. That said, there are a few instances where you can see the slight difference. The S9 makes. First off, the new improved neural engine on the S9 chip means Siri processing happens on device. That it turn purportedly leads to 25% better dictation and the ability to issue Siri commands when offline. Later this year, you will also be able to ask Siri health related queries. To text the improved Siri, I ran two experiments. First, I dictated several long texts tongue twisters as well as bohemian rhapsody and alphabet Arabic lyrics and sent them to my best friend for the tongue twister and song lyrics i simultaneously dictated to an s8 powered ultra and s9 powered series 9. you can check the gallery above the screenshot of the results it's impressive that both watches got about 95 percent accuracy but i didn't see a huge difference between the results with text featuring Korean words, Siri did an admirable job for more common words like bulgogi, but still messed up some names of our favorite K-pop singers and actors. It's not a perfect test, but for me that means I still have to educate clearly when using foreign words in English, aka Konglish. That said, I have used actor Mahashala Ali name as a Siri litmus test over the past few years back in 2018 and 2019, Siri would often get tripped up on it. I am happy to say this year it nailed it 100% of the time. What might be more useful in this fact that you can issue Siri basic tasks when you have no internet or cellular connectivity. For example, I was able to ask Siri to set timers and workouts with airplane mode enabled both on the watch and on my iPhone. Say your laundry room is in the basement, your hands are full with a laundry basket and you forgot your iPhone upstairs. You can now ask Siri to set a timer and not to worry about it. This won't work 100% of the time when Siri has to pull information from the internet. However, but if you do get a weather update preloaded from when you had internet, I found that Siri can still give you an update. The S9 chip also results in greater power savings, but you should already know that Apple Siri invested that somewhere other than better battery life. In this case, Apple decided to make the displays brighter. The Series 9 now goes up to 2000 nits from 1000 nits, while the Ultra 2 is 50% brighter at 3000 nits. Indoors and outdoors, it's difficult to tell the difference if you don't have older models on hand for comparison. And even if you do as I did, it can still be difficult to tell under certain lightning conditions.
that's because apple makes sample use of the ambient line sensor just because you can manipulate the series 9 or ultra 2 to go up to a maximum brightness doesn't mean the watch is giving you everything it's got. It's dependent on your environment which is to give your eyes a break and save battery. You are most likely to see the difference outside on a very sunny day. Perhaps the most novel update to the Series 9 and Ultra 2 is the double tap gesture. It the pinchy pinch, it's similar to double clicking with a mouse except you are making a pinching motion with your index finger and thumb. It will come via software update sometime in October but Apple sent us a separate Series 9 loaded with a beta version of the feature so I could give it a whirl. Technically speaking, this tech isn't new. The watch OS 8 Apple debuted assistive touch and accessibility feature for those with limb differences and double tap uses the same underlying technology. The sensors can detect changes in blood flow when the muscles in your forearm move and that in turn allows you to control the device and navigate menus with one hand. That said, double tap and assistive touch are not quite the same thing. For starters, assistive touch is more power intensive as it's run directly on the CPU while double tap's algorithms has been optimized to run in the background via the S9's neural engine. That's also why assistive touch is something you have to set up whereas the double tap is enabled system wide by default. Plus, assistive touch supports a wider range of gestures like a single tap or fist flange and you can customize what certain gestures do. It has to be that way because it's designed for you to navigate the entire Apple Watch single-handedly. Double tap is meant to be more contextual way to handle the primary actions of an app. For example, say you get a text, if you double tap it will bring up the ability to reply via voice messages. Double tapping again will send the message for a timer, double tapping once will pause the timer. Doing it again will unpause it when the timer goes off, pinchy pinching will stop the timer. I've also used it to control the camera shutter, control my music, snooze alarms, scroll through, watch dance widget stack and answer or end calls. This is an excellent feature but it's not without its quirks. For the one thing, it comes with a learning curve for it to work, you must first to do the raise to wake gesture, you also have to learn the timing, too fast or too slow won't work and between selecting actions, there's slight pause. When I was first trying out demos at Apple Park, I was definitely too fast and aggressive once I have got my review in it, however, I got the hang of it relatively quickly. It's also not the best at multitasking. If you navigate away from a timer, for example, you won't be able to just double tap to pause or restart while it's running in the background. Once it goes off, you can double tap again since it's back at the forefront. The sum goes for snoozing alarms. You will probably have to use Siri or your other hand if you have got lot going on at once. Another thing I wish it were slightly more customizable, Apple designed this to be initiative, but not everyone will think double tap ought to be the same thing. I get why in the message app, the gesture will bring up a voice reply. However, I would love if I could use it to scroll through quick text, reply, select one and send it. Apple is aware of this as you can customize what the double tap will do for music playback and the smart widget stack. For instance, you can decide whether the gesture will pause or play a track or skip it. For the smart stack, you can decide between scrolling through widgets or selecting the first one you have got pinned up top. Overall, there's more to like about double tap than not, it quietly literally turns the Apple Watch from a two-handed device into one that can be used single-handedly like a smartphone. You if you have got an Apple Watch, then you have undoubtedly had an in stance when your hands were occupied and you had to use your nose to select a button. This solves that frankly I firmly believe it will change the way we interact with wearables going forward. I also dig that you don't have to use your index finger. The feature also works with your middle finger and pinky fingers. Though it may not work quite as well with the later two, even so it's greater that you have alternatives in the event you lose or break your index finger. 
Apple isn't the first to come out with a gesture-based smartwatch feature. Samsung has also something very similar to assistive touch for its Galaxy watches. That said, Apple's taking it a step further and making this part of the default system interface. It's a powerful example of how much accessible design benefits everyone. I hope Apple continues to iterate and improve on this feature and that other smartwatch makers follow suit. Some of us never misplace our phones. Precision finding on the Series 9 and Ultra 2 is not for those people. This is for those of us who ring our phones multiple times a day and lose them in odd place. True story, I once left my phone inside my fridge while dazed, hungry and confused at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. Precision finding on the Apple Watch is similar to how you find your tags with your phone. At first, it brings up the control panel and ring your phones like normal. Once you are within range of your phone, you will see an approximate distance and some directional guidance. When you are within 6 feet, you will hear another beep from your phone. To test the feature, my co-worker sent me on a scavenger hunt in our office. He hid an iPhone 14 Pro Max paired with an Ultra in one area and an iPhone 15 paired with a Series 9 in another. Although I heard the iPhone 14 Pro Max ring fast, it was incredibly faint and I didn't really have a clue where it could be. After meandering around, the Series 9 was able to pick up a signal once I was within roughly 50 feet. It was super easy to find my iPhone 15 after that the whole thing only took about 3 minutes. Finding the iPhone 14 Pro Max was trickier since I had rely on sound. Our office layout is maze like so my Ultra lost connection fairly frequently because of all the walls. It took about double the time to find the iPhone 14 Pro Max. We also tested the feature outside and this time the range extended to roughly 80 feet on an account of all the open space. That said, it had a hard time getting a precise lock when my friend was actively moving around with the iPhone 15. Instead, an icon pops up letting you know that the phone is currently in motion. In other words, this feature works better if your phone is stationary. But as much as I love this feature, it requires that your phone also has the new second generation UWB chip, which means it's limited to the iPhone 15 lineup. So if you plan on upgrading only your Apple Watch, this isn't a feature you are going to have right away. Also for now, it's limited to your phone only. You can't use this Find an AirTag with your Series 9 or Ultra 2. Watch OS 10 rethinks how you will interact with the Apple Watch and would you look at that, Apple finally did something about the app grid. Apple's native apps have been redesigned so they are more glanceable and they are a hell of lot less scrolling. The controls have also been reconfigured, swiping up no longer brings up the control panel but a list of widgets. To get the control panel, you now have to press the side button while double pressing the crown brings up your recent apps. However, there are a few watch faces that we didn't get to see in the beta, a solar analog phase and new modular ultra phase. The solar analog phase is on the simpler side. Its main thing is that the light trail behind the second hand changes from the light to dark depending on whether it's day or night. The modular phase is exclusive to the Ultra and Ultra 2 but is a dream for data nerds aka me. You can pack in 7 complications, 6 small ones and a larger one in the center. The bezel can also show either elevation, depth or seconds in the real time. Like Double Tap Watch OS 10 is one of the, those updates that has larger implications for how we will interact with the Apple Watch down the road. Together, these two updates make the Apple Watch much more glanceable and distinct from a mini phone on your wrist. Meanwhile, cellular capability and the fact that Siri now works more seamlessly offline give you a device that more independent of your phone. There's a shift happening here, but Apple isn't busting down the door like the cool aid man. It's a gentle shift where Apple puts down some building blocks, sits back and waits to see what people build with it. 
Iterative updates aren't bad, they are just not flashy, but that's the biggest problem facing the Series 9 and Ultra 2. These are the best smartwatches Apple's ever made, but while the updates do make the overall experience better, it's like paying another dollar to add an extra toppling to your pizza. For some people, that makes the pizza for others, it's nice but really not necessary and of course the smartwatches cost hundreds of dollars. If you have a Series 7 or later, you don't really need to update. For owners with a Series 5 or earlier, it might be worth it since you will get a bigger screen, several new sensors and a processing bump. Series 6 owners are the ones I see being most on the fence and to those folks, I mostly encourage upgrades if your battery life isn't cutting it anymore. For folks with an ultra seriously cool your jets, you are getting the modular ultra watch face with watchOS 10 and 3000 nits versus 2000 nits doesn't make a huge difference. Otherwise, the biggest case I can make for an upgrade is if you must have double tap, either because you have got minor dexterity issue or think it will be the coolest thing since sliced bread. If you were on the fence, I suggest trying assistive touch out for an afternoon to see whether you like the idea of using gesture. That said, if you don't often find yourself tapping your Apple Watch with your nose, that probably isn't a feature you'd need right away. But speaking frankly, Apple did not make these watches for folks looking to upgrade. It made them for people who don't have an Apple Watch already and it's still true that the majority of people buying Apple Watches each year are new to the platform. For those folks, these are the latest and greatest will until next year.